It's been a while since I've made one of these satisfying Blender videos, but in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to make this weaving simulation in Blender. We're gonna make this completely from scratch. Here you can see is a render of my original. It has a little bit of an issue going on on the one side, but I kind of left it in because I thought it was funny. But this one here that you're looking at, this is actually the result from this tutorial you're about to watch. We're gonna go very basic on the materials here, but that's up to you how you wanna do that. But the main idea here is just to make this really cool um, motion graphic kind of thing that is just satisfying to look at. So I'm also going to be uploading this, by the way, to my Patreon. And for those of you who don't know, the Patreon, it's only a few bucks a month and I put all these sort of things on there and there's really cool stuff on there if you guys want to check it out in the description below. And more than that, it also helps support the channel, which means more content like this for the Blender community. So let's jump into it and I hope you guys enjoy. So to get started, let's select everything in our scene. Let's press X and go delete. We now have a clean scene. We're gonna go Shift A. Under our mesh options, we're gonna add in a plane. And let's go into our edit mode with this plane and with everything active, let's right click and click on subdivide. And then under our subdivision settings, let's make this 32 or Maybe even a bit more than that. Let's go with 45, okay? Um, yeah, it really depends on what you can handle. I mean, I would say if you've got a smaller computer, maybe don't go past that, but maybe I'll go up to 55. Um, obviously, the more you add in, it'll look better, but obviously it'll also take um, more processing power. But with that done, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the top view, and we're just gonna select a strip in the middle like so, and we're gonna go Control plus, and then we're gonna go X, and just just delete those faces. So now we only have two strips like this. We're gonna tab back out. We're gonna go to our right orthographic view by pressing free on the number pad. And uh, actually, let's just go back into edit mode, select everything, and in the right orthographic view, go R, nine, zero, and press enter. And you can see we now have that origin point sitting here in the center. We're gonna go G, Z, and we're gonna move it down, all of this, till we have everything sitting kind of at the top of that origin point like so. We're then gonna quickly select just the top verts like this. Oops, here we go. And we're gonna go over to our object data properties and under the vertex groups, we're gonna go plus and let's assign this. Okay, so it's now assigned to that. And let's double click on here and just call it pin. Okay, because that's the um, cloth that's not gonna be moving. That's where it's gonna hinge. We'll use this later in our cloth simulation, but at least we have it assigned. So we're gonna tab back out. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna build our um, structure for this to kind of weave through. So let's go Shift A. Under our mesh options, we're gonna add in a cylinder. And this is a big cylinder. So let's tab into edit mode and let's go S, Shift Z. So S, Shift Z with everything active. Let's scale it in. Uh, let's go about that much, just so it can fit in our gap there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate this, right click to let go, and then go R90 while we're in a front orthographic view and press enter. And then we're gonna go, um, let's go S Shift X. So S Shift X and let's scale it out like so, just a little bit. Okay, just so it's bigger than that pole there. And let's go G, Z and move it up. And let's move it to the very top, like so. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to our face select option. We're gonna select this face over here. And let's hold in shift and select this face over here. And let's go control B to bevel. And let's roll the middle mouse button two times just to add in some segments. And that just rounds things off nicely. We're then going to just select these verts over here and go G, Z and just move them up like so, so they're out of the way. In fact, we can take it quite high like so. We're now going to take this guy over here and in our front view, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate and then Z to move it down and let's move it down about this much. And then once you complete that action, you can go Shift R to repeat that action about this many more times, roughly. Okay, so we want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About seven of these should be fine, but we're not gonna use all of them anyway. You could if you wanted to. We're then gonna tap out of edit mode, 
we're gonna grab our cloth, go into our right orthographic view, and then we're gonna move this to our left. And we're gonna kind of bring it right over here till it's kind of sitting at the front of this thing here at the top, like so. We're then gonna just grab this back in edit mode, one of these, and go Shift D, and let's go Y to move it this way. And then let's just go S Shift X and scale it in along those two axes just to make it a thin pole. And in our right orthographic view in wireframe, we can just quickly go and line it up over here. And that's just like a pole that kind of holds, that just makes it feel like there's something holding that. We're gonna go P and just separate by selection. So this is its own object. Okay, so now we have all of our elements kind of in place. Well, actually we don't. We still have to make the, the thing that is gonna um, push through here and weave everything. But it's actually quite simple, so let's do that. So one simple way to do this is to go Shift A under your mesh options, just go and add in a cube. Why is it so hard to get a cube? There we go. Add in a default cube, tab it into edit mode and inside of edit mode, scale it down a bit. And let's go to modifiers and give that a mirror modifier. And let's go G, X and move it out into X. So in your front orthographic view, this is what you should see. Okay, so we're gonna actually move it more forward like so. And in our front orthographic view, we're just gonna go G, X, and move it over like so. And at this point, you're just gonna bring it in like this a little bit. And then you go to your top view, and in your top view, you're gonna go Control R to add in a loop, double click, and then double G just to slide it. And then let's select this face over here and then go E to extrude it out a little bit. And let's just grab the whole thing and just maybe move it out just a bit so it clears the end of that um, cloth over there. Maybe even a little bit more, like so. And it's mirrored over on this side. But what we're gonna do to make this unique is we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a cylinder in edit mode, S to scale it, and then R, Y, nine zero, hit enter, and then go G, X, and move it over to this side. S to scale it, and then go to your top view, and then just move it and mount it up against this bit over here like so. We're then going to, I'm going to wireframe and just select this and go G, X and just move it out and then go Control B to make a bevel on the end. And uh, where we want it to be is just about here, just moving it up. So now we have this thing over here. And uh, what we can do is we can actually se um, select this whole cylinder. So just with it still active, go Control L That'll select the whole thing and in your front orthographic view, Shift D to duplicate and then R90 and hit enter. And let's take this duplication and place it right here. Go into our right orthographic view and let's place it about here. We're then gonna grab this and just move it down. And let's go to our face select option, select this top face and then go E to extrude it up quite high, like so. We now have this. What we can do is we can go and just select the face on here, Control L to select the whole thing, and then Control B just to make a bevel to make it nice and smooth, and then tab back out, right click, and then go Shade Smooth. And now we have that. You might wanna come in here and just add in a few more loops, and that just makes it perform a little bit better, I found. But that's about it, and um, what you can do is you can now select everything and go right click, go Shade Smooth, and now we have everything set up. So at this point, you're gonna make sure to go to your desktop and save this. I'm just gonna call it uh, Weaver. And I'm gonna go save it blend file. And now what we're gonna do is set up some physics. Or well, should we do the animation first? I think we should actually do the animation first, then do the physics. So the animation is super simple, so don't freak out. We're gonna select this um, thing over here that's gonna be weaving, and let's come to our end frames and make it 400, because we're gonna need a bit of animation space here. And let's roll our middle mouse button here in the timeline just to shrink it a bit so we can see everything. We're gonna to come to about frame, uh, let's go to frame 20. Well, you know what, let's, let's actually make it 10, just so we have a little bit of time for the cloth to kind of start reacting first. So at frame 10 with this guy selected, we're gonna come into our right orthographic view, we're gonna go into wireframe, and we're gonna go G, and we're gonna move it so that this pole over here, this long shaft here in our right orthographic view, is right between the top two spokes on this frame here, like so. So we're gonna place it right here in front, and we're gonna go I, and we're gonna insert a location 
and a rotation keyframe. So now you can see there's a keyframe here in frame 10. Then we're gonna go up to frame 45, about here. And then we're gonna go G and just X or G, Y. Let's go G, Y and on frame 45, let's move it through to about here. And let's go I and insert a location and rotation. So now we can see this like that, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this while we still have it active, this keyframe here and go Shift D to duplicate it. And let's drag it up to about 70. So now we have a hold here from 45 to 70. That'll give the cloth time to fall and react. And then we're gonna go to frame 100. And frame 100, we're gonna grab this and go G. And we're gonna move it down just in front of the next two spokes. So see, before it went through these two here, but now we're gonna put it right in front of these two here. And we're gonna go I and insert a location and rotation at frame 100. And then we're gonna have it moving first. Let's now go to frame 130, like so. Or maybe 135 actually, 134. I'll go over 134. And we're gonna go G, Y, and we're gonna move it through to about here. And we're gonna go I, insert a location and rotation. So you can see what's happening here. In the beginning, it goes through here, stops a bit, goes down, and then goes through here. And that's what we're gonna keep repeating. So let's just grab this last keyframe Shift D to duplicate it. Let's drag it to about 160 for a hold, like so. And then let's drag up to 195. And at 195, we're gonna go G and we're gonna move it over in front of the next two spokes down. So we keep going down between the two. So we're gonna come put it just in front here and then go I, insert a location and rotation. And then what we're gonna do Let's go through to 226, or maybe 225, and let's go G, Y, and pull it through to about here, and let's go I, insert location and rotation, and let's select that Shift D to duplicate, and let's create a little bit of a hold, about to 250, and then we're gonna go to 280, and then we're gonna go G, and move it down and now in front of this one and we're gonna go I, insert location and rotation. And then we're gonna to come to about, let's say 310. And let's go G, Y and move it through to about here and go I, insert location and rotation. Let's grab that keyframe, shift D to duplicate it and drag it out to about, let's say 335. And then what we'll do is we'll grab our first keyframe here and go Shift D and let's drag that to about, let's say 370, like so. So it's back where it started. So now what we have, if we go into solid view, you're gonna see this. This is our animation if we hit the space bar. And the reason it pauses is to give our cloth time to fall through a little bit. And now we can actually do the physics part of this tutorial. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna select this cloth and we're gonna go to our physics settings. Let's give it a cloth. It should disappear at the moment because we're already into the simulation. So let's go to frame one and let's go down and let's enable that under the shape. Let's go to pin group, click on it. And there should be that group we created earlier called pin. So let's click on it. So now if we hit the space bar, it's not going to fall because the cloth is actually hanging and it is actually simulating now, but there's no interaction. So let's select this mover here under the physics. Let's give that a collision. And of course we want to select the frame here and we also wanna give that a collision. So now if we go to frame one, make sure to save and let's hit the space bar. And now what you're gonna see is um, a simulation, but one that is broken, but we'll fix that in a second. The main thing is here, you can see it is now slowly trying to cache out this animation. We can see it's not quite working in some places. We'll fix that in a bit. But what we need to do is, um, Let's just grab our cloth and let's go to the quality steps and make it 12 for now. Let's just also go down and under the collision. Let's enable self collision so it collides with itself. Go to frame one, hit the space bar. It's gonna be quite a lot slower now. But you should see it shouldn't be doing any of that ripping like it did before. 
So the issue here is that we have to move this guy a little bit further so the cloth can fall through. So that's really simple. All we have to do is come to each point where we animated that. So go to your right orthographic view, enable auto keying, and then in your right orthographic view, just simply move it further back like so. And then um, select that keyframe, Shift D to duplicate and just move it to the next keyframe. So we have that hold. So you can see now it's gone out further Then it comes back here and let's go to the next one. So let be 135 and 135, let's just go G, Y and move it in further. Let's select that Shift D to duplicate, create another hold and let's go up to frame 125 and let's go G, Y and move it out further. Select it, Shift D to drag it out to create a hold and let's skip over to 310. G, Y, let's move it out further. And let's select it, Shift D to create a hold, to drag it out to the next frame. And uh, let's now see what that looks like. So we're gonna go to frame one, Alt H to hide, uh, to bring back our cloth. Let's undo the auto keying, and now let's hit the spacebar and see what that looks like. So you can see here, it is very slowly um, caching, but it is actually working. So if I showed you this in real time, uh, it would be going really slow. So what we're gonna do here, is I'm actually gonna cache this out, and then we'll see what it all um, looks like. So let's actually pause for now. Let's select our cloth. Let's make sure to save. And let's go under our settings, and let's go all the way down to cache. Let's make it 400 on the end value, because that's what we have with our frames. And I'm gonna go up to the quality steps, I'm gonna make it 20, which you don't have to do, but that's what I prefer. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna hit bake. And this is gonna take a few minutes, but when it's done, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And it is now finished caching, and let's have a look at the results. So if we now hit the space bar, let's see what it looks like. And there you can see, we have a weaving effect. You could actually do this as many times as you want. You can keep going down and down. It just depends on how much you know you want to do caching, how much time you want to spend on it. But overall, this is the weaving effect, and it's very satisfying. I hope you guys are doing okay so far with this. Let's add a few more things. We're going to select the cloth under our modifiers. We're going to give it a solidify, and uh, let's bring it in in negatives just a little bit. So now it has a little bit of thickness. I think that just looks a lot better. And uh, let's go Shift A, let's add in a plane, S to scale it up, G to bring it down, tab into edit mode and go E to extrude up a face, S to scale it big and then go X and delete the face. A to select everything and then go Control B, create a bevel, roll a few segments in and tab back out, right click and then go Shade Smooth and now we have a little um, inverted dome. In the inside, we're going to go Shift A, let's add in a camera, press zero to go into camera view and then zoom back. I like to go to my camera settings and make it 125 in these sort of situations and uh, zoom back a little bit. And I'm going to go to my output settings. I'm going to make it 1080 at the top and you can do whatever you want. And I'm going to place it about here and I'm going to go to the front view or I'm going to go to the front first frame and I'm gonna see what it looks like. And at this point, we wanna kind of position it, but find something that you think works for what you're trying to do. When that is done, we're gonna go Shift A. Let's add in a area light, move it up. Let's give that a strength of 240, and let's make it two meters big. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to our render settings. Let's make it cycles. Let's make the device a GPU, if you have one. Then you can go Control B and just drag over your camera just to make sure the render border is around the camera. Then we're gonna go Z and go rendered. And now we're gonna see this. Let's go over to our render settings. Let's make the sample amount 80. And let's now grab our light and go Shift D to duplicate it, rotate it in a little bit. And it's at this point where you can also go to your world settings. You can add in a sky texture and let's make the strength 0.2. And 
And that's it. At this point, it's up to you what you want to do with the materials. For my original, I just added some metal and some cloth. But you could very simply just go to your shading workspace and just add a material, give it a color of your choice, and then select everything else. Give that a material, make it metallic, make it darker. Um, the material is the simple part. So once you've made it this far, it's really quite simple for you guys to now figure out what you want to do with the materials here but um, there's a ton of different ways you can go with styling this but i really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and if you want to render it out as always you go to your output settings select a folder on your desktop and then you can change it to ffmpeg video under the encoder you can make it an mp4 make sure to save and then just go render and render out your animation to your selected output folder. So that has been this tutorial. I will be uploading this to my Patreon and I hope you guys have enjoyed.